Hello guys, this is uh, Sanjana. So I have passed my uh, 12th exam this year and uh, I have given NEET, JE, KPYSX and uh, KCD. So I am um, looking forward to join uh, IAC. So I had a couple of uh, genuine questions for uh, one of the uh, faculty members of uh, CFL. He's a professor at CFL, uh, a math professor. So uh, he had uh, uh, done his B.Tech in NITK and uh, he found his interest in science and he joined uh, NCBS, uh, National Center for Biological Sciences, uh, a branch of TIFR. Uh, so, and then, yeah, so here we are with him. Uh, sir, I would like to ask you a couple of questions uh, which I have regarding the uh, pure science field and uh, I would like, like you to answer them. Okay, go for it. So, what do you think is pure science? How is it different from, uh, you know, medical or engineering? Oh, I see, yeah. I think in sciences, what you're focused on is to discover fundamental principles that govern nature. Whilst in medicine or primarily in engineering, you're looking at applying principles that are already known to generate devices and so on. Or So engineering is the word engineer, to build something. You're building something, given some blocks, you're building something higher from the blocks and in science you're interested in probing more about what the blocks are or you're interested in fundamental questions regarding nature like how do things work what causes things to work and so on whereas in engineering and in medicine you're interested in given a set of things how do i build new things and and so on and things like that so in that sense science is a very fundamental inquiry into nature as opposed to it's an inquiry when you do science as opposed to in engineering what inspired you to take up science after you did? Because you were in the engineering field and then you shifted to your science. Right, so when I was uh, studying BTEC in chemical engineering, so I did my BTEC in chemical engineering. And in the first one uh, year, you have common courses. And I got fascinated by the courses in science there, which have been exposed in a completely different way than I had before. And then I took that up further and then undergraduate because NITK is a good college which gives you a lot of freedom to study, you see. Yeah. And so I could uh, do several courses, master's courses in physics, and I was doing a lot of self study on my own. And so this gave me a lot of space to better probe science, to understand science. My intention in all this was I wanted to understand nature, how nature worked, but that time I was not aware of this, that I, what I was clearly getting into. And so I found my interest somewhere else. I want to understand how nature works. And so as a result, I started probing, forming my own questions, developing my, with the help of good professors. They were guiding me throughout. And professors from engineering as well as science. So this worked because there are good professors there. And so as a result of doing all this, I somehow ended up doing my project, my thesis on pure science. It was regarding general relativity. And so that worked. That's how open the institution was. It allowed for me to pursue a BTEC in chemical engineering while submitting a thesis on general relativity. And so, and th this inspired me as I kept doing more and more science in this direction. I began to ask questions on my own. And then I discovered that I have to do science after this. You know, I can't do it because I was enrolled in an engineering college. I couldn't do it half hearted. So I had to get into a science program. And then this inspired me to join for PhD at TFR right after this. Uh, you mentioned about PhD. So, what is PhD according to simple words? Oh, I mean, it's it's a solely personal journey of mm -hmm. inquiring into something. So there is, and some of us may not even be aware what we are inquiring into. It's just we have an idea in the mind, and there's probably some people who we identify as our advisors. They are interested in somewhat similar but they are slightly more experienced than us. They have looked into the problem. We are broadly interested in a little deeper. And so it's really an understanding between an understanding not as a compromise, but a genuine wanting to inquire into something in which the professor learns something. Also, the student learns something, not necessarily from the professor, but together. He learns something together by inquiring into something about nature in PhD in science topics that we are talking about. And so in this inquiry, like, you could probably diverge once you look into a problem long enough or critically enough. I wouldn't just use time as a factor because 
some people finish PhDs quite fast than what they're expected to, and some may take longer. So time may not be the only factor. It's about being critical about your problem, being severely interested in the problem in in a way, you know, you just love the problem that you're doing. And so in this, there will be so many divergences. Like as you read about something, as you inquire about something, you may feel that, oh, this is connected to something else. And so this is really like, for example, when you start studying, uh, one of the things I was looking at is about how molecules are transported in a cell and then, and how, you know, and my, my mind immediately went to, oh, if this was a medicine that has to reach if it's a mo- molecule that composes some medicine that's supposed to reach some part of the cell, how would this medicine go like? How do I ensure that this is exactly delivered to the target? And so on. And so, and because there was COVID and all. And so, you see, uh, in the, it's a solely personal journey. It's about how you as a human being begin to shape your own ideas. You know, you don't depend on anyone. Of course, you seek help from your advisor. You talk to your colleagues who are all equally in this journey. They have their own journey. But you're going through something in somewhat similar. You're inquiring into something about nature. And so you begin to form very, you could possibly form very broad perspectives. And this may branch out in several ways. Like I said, it's a personal journey. And so, for example, studying about chromosomes led me to want to understand how cognition works, how the mind works, and questions like that. So I could diverge in another direction. And the beauty is PhD allows for all these possibilities. So it's up to you to what to choose, you see. And this is solely based on one's personal interest. So, and it's often, it often turns out that people who do PhD would still want to do further. But once you're done with PhD, you're like an independent researcher. That is, you're able to look at something, generate a perspective, phrase a problem, identify the exact problem, devise a means to solve that problem, and so on. So you've achieved that sort of independence, at least that, in a good PhD. And so, People go on to do what is called postdoc, postdoctoral research, in which you apply all these skills into solving a problem of your own. And in a postdoc, though, you have much lesser guidance from your advisor. In that sense, he's more like a colleague with you. He has a little more experience, he can help you with this, but you're not like, you know, there's not much of a power dynamics anymore. There's very little in PhD anyway, in a good institute, like the one that you mentioned about. And I hope, yeah, and so after postdoc, Maybe people would like to do further post up. It's all, you know, it's all a free journey, you see. It's solely shaped by one's own interest. You mentioned about post up. What are the options uh, one gets uh, to do after post up? So it may be that, I think I can give you a question a little bit. Correct me if I'm misinterpreting it. So, as I mentioned, PhD is a solely personal journey. And how do you prove deeper into nature and all? It is subject really to the individual that is going through this. See, because in a postdoc, you take up, you apply your skills, and, and even more, as I mentioned before, as we talked about it, postdoc is really conducting your own independent research. Problem. But then it could turn out that there have been, and it, I've noticed that some students, some PhD students, may feel that there could be a more fundamental inquiry into nature. Like, you see, that maybe that may not be of great relevance to us right now, but I'd like to point out that maybe PhD students understand that, you know, suppose I really love nature, I want to go and work at it. Like, suppose I love forests, I don't want to just model forests, I don't want to just study the dynamics, I want to really go and see what's happening there. I know quite a few people who have done this. And so, it's not about, so as the question about postdoc is, uh, that's a solely personal question, but uh, the beauty is, once you go through PhD, it's when you realize that, you know, this is not deep enough for me, or maybe this is good enough for me. It's solely up to the individual, and then they could diverge onto a different path. But the reason when we have to, when we, it's recommended that one would go through a PhD is one gets the space to probe into all this, like study something well enough, critically enough, and then realize that, okay, this is not how critical I want it to be. I want it to be, you know, in my own way. And then, but you get the freedom to shape your own path, you see. And so I feel uh, the question regarding what after postdoc. Usually, professors in various uh, academic institutions have a postdoctoral qualification. They have some research experience after PhD. And so, what after postdoc? If you're interested in continuing along the academic path, you could be a professor in a university and so on. But then, as I mentioned, it's morally of a personal question. And then, it may not, you know, it varies from individual to individual. So, do I answer something or does it? Yeah. Okay. 
so so one can you uh, know join a college uh, and be a professor and continue uh, research side by side can one do yeah so that's uh, i think yeah thanks for asking that yeah. in most institutions a professor has the job of teaching maybe a few classes uh, one or two or up to the choice but their main role is to conduct research in the topic they have excelled in their phd and so on but again this is kind of personal it varies from institute to institute for example during my phd my professor wasn't teaching a lot of classes but he engaged intensely in scientific research and so it could vary from institution to institution as you said uh, it's all fag- fragmented basically when we uh, i mean it's uh, been like maybe 20000 years or so that we have gained the capability to uh, you know think about things and uh, divide things for our convenience but then nature never had it right like math physics right? sure so, these are all human artifacts for our study of nature we fragmented as you know math and all that but this is up so what are you trying to get it's not really uh, yeah that's what so yeah, it's a nice thing that you pointed out actually thanks for pointing it out because uh, he, these are all the way human beings started studying nature one of the ways in which human beings study study nature that i'll break it into so and so if you look at it how chemistry was born and so on it was a bunch of physicists probing uh, matter they wanted to understand final constituents of matter and so on and so on and later we arrived at chemical laws which are rules of combining electrons combining various molecules with compounds but which we are taught as electronic reactions like exchange of electrons and so on or you see but the the way the study it just turns out that there's so much information right now in the 21st century and with the advent of artificial intelligence and a lot of technology along this direction there's just so much information and so much knowledge now how do you interpret this how do you process this it becomes inevitable to categorize things but i think in the process of doing that we miss the big picture which is that this is one holistic study and so i think keeping these two together like keeping in mind that you know i am doing all this but the actual thing i'm studying is nature what's the actual problem i think the sense of awareness or coming about of this awareness would help us you know to stay on the ground look at it and i think all of this is coupled to appreciation of beauty of what you're doing and so uh, ultimately it goes down to you know teachers who help you appreciate the subject and not just the subject their subject is something to teach but that everything else is connected to this you see and this is why i'm able to do this and so on so on. does it answer your question also yes. so yeah i think thank you sir um, for clearing the doubts i had and no, it's a very really nice conversation thank yeah. you so much yeah. thank you thanks a lot